in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed so before you shout Jira to the nations, call him in your room. Verify that you know what happened in the burning bush. That's why God told Moses, I'm not going to allow you embarrass and disgrace me. Let's do this at the, at the burning bush. A sample of the miracles you are going to be showing Pharaoh. Throw the rod, pick it by the tail. And he said, now you can go. When he stood before Pharaoh, he was not trying. He came with grace backing him. Listen, you cannot call the world to come and celebrate Jesus in your life while you are still trying to understand the ropes around this thing. While growth remains ever increasing, mastery is a reality in this kingdom. He said, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Is someone learning? So, he has given us exceeding, my apologies for leaving this on the screen, but this is powerful. I want you to see it. Exceeding great and precious promises. Did you know, Reverend Sam, many of the miracles we think God uniquely brought to others was already there for everyone. There are few miracles we celebrate in the lives of people that was uniquely channeled to them. These are possibilities that are left in the spirit. If someone buys a land today and builds an estate, it will look as though the federal government kept the land for him. No, it's been there. It's the one who saw it and paid for it and built on it that becomes the owner. Are we together? Yes. I believe what I'm telling you with all my heart. Exceeding great and precious promises. So your first assignment, please sit down, please sit down. Your first assignment now, remember what we are dealing with, lifted by grace. You want to understand the dynamics of the supply of grace, that when it has to do with the enabling grace, it is revelation dependent, not desire dependent. Many believers keep wishing in their desire or keep complaining in their absence of results. Why are things like this in my life? That is not the seed for the abundance of grace. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Not your knowledge, the knowledge. It's your assignment to find out what knowledge controls prosperity. What knowledge controls lifting. The grace for prosperity does not come until the knowledge for prosperity comes. The grace for influence never comes until the knowledge for influence comes. I want everybody to hear my voice. So how are you going to go about it? I will tell them to hear me. No. Hear ye him is a grace that is supported by a kind of knowledge. Knowledge number one. If I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men. Do you know that? Otherwise it becomes a risk for God to draw men. You need to know the kind of men God draws to you first. Find out the kind of men God drew to David. There were men who were in debt. There were men who were distressed. Wicked people all together. Are you ready for that kind of attraction? When you do not know what to do with them? No. The mighty men you are calling do not come as mighty men. They come as weak men. Then the knowledge you have now turns them to mighty men. 
I was very touched hearing the story. I believe that is a lady in the church. Hearing there's nothing more powerful. It's called the transforming church. You know what that means? That means you come as you are, but it's against the mandate to stay as you are. That means, listen, the body of knowledge God has given his servant has a grace for transformation, but that grace is not, it does not come until you submerge yourself. There is a body of truth, doctrinally speaking. If you do not know, you will not carry the grace. Listen, look at the ratio of impartation to teaching. Three years to one night. Please sit down. Look at the ministry of Jesus. The ratio of impartation to teaching. For one encounter on the day of Pentecost, it took three years plus 40 extra days. When he resurrected, he did not even have time to celebrate it. Return from heaven and say, gentlemen, go back, let's discuss. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming. There are still some things I've not taught you. And the Bible says he spent 40 days teaching them the matters of the kingdom. As powerful as impartation is, the value of impartation is when it comes upon a vessel that has knowledge. The potential of impartation is released. That is why impartation in ignorance can easily delve into witchcraft and extra biblical practices because there is no knowledge to define the coordinates of the administration of the anointing. Is someone learning tonight? Knowledge. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God. Jesus is called the wisdom of God. Jesus is called the word of God. All these activities I mentioned were richly captured in his life, yet he refused to be named after them. He could name his house the house of prayer, but he named himself the word. The compendium, the logos of God. Are we together now? The Bible says, has thou not heard, has thou not known? The everlasting God, the Lord, he says he does, he does not, um, he is not weary. The, and then he says, there is no searching of his understanding. It is that understanding that grants him the capacity to not be weak. When you say God is not weak, it's because there is a vast body of knowledge that forbids him from limitation. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. So here's how it works. Your first assignment in activating the supply of the enabling grace is to understand methodically this exceeding great and precious promises. My question for you is, do you know them? Because you see, you are not saved by works, but you are saved unto good works. Are we together now? The purpose of the investment of God's grace upon your life is that you would produce results according to John 15 and verse 8. He says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide or remain. Most believers have celebrated ignorance or have random their approach to acquiring spiritual knowledge. Please look up. Their approach to acquiring spiritual knowledge is rather random, sir. If they stumble across a message that profits them, fine and good. If they so happen to meander around a conference, fine and good. There is no staying methodically to be taught line upon line, precepts upon precepts. The absence of methodical mentorship is why there are gaps in the spiritual understanding of many believers. Hence, the absence of grace. So people know something small about favor. They know something small about speed. They know something small about help. They know something small about prayer. They know something small about fasting. And all of those knowledge, they, they are important, but they are insufficient to produce anything potent spiritually. Grace and peace. Have I lost it tonight? Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge 
according as his divine power the bible says hath given us all things right but it says through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of cause verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you how many of you all of you are children of the most high remember jesus made reference to this scripture verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men so the absence of spiritual knowledge exact knowledge reduces a man with godlike capacity to become a mere man the bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child that he differed not from a slave what does that mean the experience of that one even though a legitimate beneficiary of the inheritance will not be different from a slave Is someone learning? So the Bible is very, very clear as to the fact that God made a commitment that is connected to conditions. So the first assignment is to know those promises. What has God said concerning me? The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. My sister, listen to me. My brother, listen to me. It does not matter what your background is. Whilst it is profitable to be inspired with those you think have gone, that God seems to help, let me bring you good news that the same Lord is rich unto all. In as much as there are disparities as far as the election of grace is concerned, everybody in Christ, Bishop Oyedeko will say, has a high calling. There are no low callings in Christ. By reason of the election of grace, we may have certain duties, certain offices that may seem to look higher than others. But let me tell you the truth. Everybody can make maximum kingdom impact with their lives. If only you know how to tap into the supply of this mysterious supply of the spirit. All blessings that we call grace. A gentleman was about to start ministry and he sent me a text I believe he was sincere and he sent me a text and demanded an amount as what he felt would be support I, I don't even know the person and I don't want to tell you how much um, it's, it's a very disturbing amount hundreds of millions and he said he doesn't know you know if this can happen <laughs> and I said this man already that is an exam he wrote and failed by himself by that email it is it is proof that he should not even go near the corridors of ministry he should quickly go and find someone who will help him if it this kind of understanding you want to be a shepherd you will kill your members from day one the worst the, the most hit one will be the first member who comes are we together? Now, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying, look at the kind of understanding. And this guy is, expects the, the grace. You see that it is unfair to want a certain level of grace without the requisite level of understanding. Hallelujah. The enabling grace so what is the key to accessing this grace the key is to access high level spiritual illumination backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit please listen I'm giving you a very powerful key now the key that releases an individual into abundance of grace if you want to call it great grace if you want to call it ever increasing grace if you want to call it is high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 
high level spiritual illumination that is backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the spirit it says the eyes of your understanding please give us amplified the eyes of your understanding it says being flooded with light flooded with light how many of you have gone into a stadium in the night have you gone for a crusade or any activity in the stadium if you were blindfolded and they opened your eye in the night and you didn't have the chance to look up you would never even know that it was night because of the high level they are called flood lights it is night right now and if we cover all the windows and just leave you maybe we cover all the windows anything that can lead you outside because of the light here you will still think you were day listen to me if you really want to walk in power and all the dimensions of the grace of God I give you a an irrefutable key number one high level spiritual illumination you must know what the exceeding and precious promises are and then you must find out how they operate see knowing the promise is one part of your understanding but you must know how to release the supply to your life most people do not know the promises others know the promises but they do not know how to release it to their lives this is why God puts conferences like this so that there are moments where you come with the word and speaker after speaker are we together now? They come and with sound exegesis of the word, they open you to various dimensions that help you access these exceeding precious promises. The eyes of your understanding. What version is this? Being enlightened. Let's go to Amplified again. That you may know the hope of your calling thank you and he says to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance where in the saints show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Apostle. I'm in a state right now where this teaching has opened me up to gross spiritual ignorance. I can say of a truth that I have not found this enabling grace working in my life. Where do I start from? It starts with a decision. That I'm going to commit myself this year to be in pursuit of light. I'm going to cut away from vain activities that only distract and flatter and pursue substance as far as my destiny is concerned. Seeing then that my exploits are grace dependent and that this grace is knowledge dependent, my passion for that grace must be expressed through my passion for knowledge. Structured knowledge that works because the Bible says, listen carefully, it says that was the true light. That means there are false lights. They carry a semblance of results and you waste your time around them only to find out that they cannot translate to the profiting of your destiny. In fact, the Bible says it this way. Paul mentoring his son in the gospel. He says, meditate on these things. He says, give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto how many? All. I made up my mind like never before that I will put myself in the position of a student who does not know anything. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 says, let him that thinks he knows anything, it says, 
that he should know that he does not know anything yet as he ought to know. So I challenge myself. I thank God for what God is doing. But there is a benchmark. It says this one thing I do. Is that in your Bible? Forgetting the things that are behind. It didn't say forgetting bad things. Forgetting the things that are behind. He says I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. I press. I press. I press. Study. Study. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained. Do you know that what you are calling your future is already somebody's reality? There are people who by reason of the investment of the spirit, they have toured this earth. I'm telling you, they have tamed life like an animal. There are some them you can follow. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you listen the moment you start settling i am better than my relatives in the village you have pegged yourself at a level you see the character of champions is that they never see the finish line it is only the spectators that see the finish line. A champion has lost the ability to see the finish line. When coaches train champions, they extend the finish line by several meters beyond the actual finish line so that psychologically they peg themselves at a higher standard and they are surprised on the day of competition that they finished because their mind still believes they should go further. Let me challenge someone here. It is too early to start clapping for yourself. I celebrate what you have started doing, but if your pastor, your man of God, the prophet over your life is still with energy and passion driving, you don't rest on the second day. You rest on the seventh day. Some of you are already resting even before the seventh, the seventh day. Apostle, I went to my small fellowship. Oh, Apostle, I was invited for a fellowship and my goodness, the word was so powerful. Who marked you? By what parameters did you vex that meeting? In an exam where the highest students got 7%, if you are given an award for first position, he's the one who will get it. He still failed but he failed the highest. If you now categorize people into a great system of F, uh, what they call it, E down to A, all the people bought the first position and the one who didn't write the exam will be in one category. Be careful who is clapping for you. Now, I'm not saying don't, don't enjoy. There are times to pat yourself at the back. But let me tell you, there is, there is the spirit of mediocrity that has stopped many people from accessing grace. Arriving too early, celebrating over nothing. We are talking of days where you will keep nations still for Jesus. I minimize my hearing and my seeing of anything that is able to distract me. No. It is a formula that has worked powerfully for me. If I hear you clapping from afar, I tell you God bless you from afar and let's get to work. For as long as there is somebody not healed, for as long as sick people come, 500 of them and two are healed, we give God glory, but that's not the best. Come on. one house and you're about to sleep what if God says so it you are not there mm, you are not there you are not there stop arriving too early you're not there this is a prophetic word for someone don't say I am better than my relatives we're talking about the nations we're talking about revealing Jesus to nations and territories 
Let me find somewhere to tie up my teaching so we pray. Saliga Baratusiata. High level spiritual illumination. Write this down, please. Backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13 14. 2 Corinthians 13 14. Let me prophesy to someone. You don't have to stand. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for you. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his word in me the week you came for this conference be patient something is happening that you are not yet seeing we have been trained to celebrate success by external parameters but it happens within out you are the transforming church the Holy Ghost is breathing upon you and doing something upon your spirit man I know no one has risen in your family I know they have concluded that nobody can any can ever rise can anything good come out of Nazareth Nathaniel said listen it was not Nathaniel's fault he was not lying find out how many Nazarenes died shamelessly in the Bible he knew what he was saying find out about Samson that they rise and fall and he said Jesus we know that you are just a balloon that will rise up and not last and Jesus said I may not seem to last but mine is not weakness it's for a cause Nathaniel said can anything good come we have studied you there is a pattern that surrounds your life. There are many of you, whilst you are here sitting or standing, it's like there is a voice that is speaking to you. Will the nations ever celebrate Jesus upon this life? You don't have to be ministry, as it were, fivefold. The grace of God. Neither do men light a lamp. The key word is light the lamp. If the lamp does not have fire, it can be thrown anywhere. But the moment light comes, he says you cannot hide it. It will burn everything under until it gives light. He say in that simile to let your light so shine. Someone prophesy, so shine. Say it to yourself, so shine. So shine, so shine. Beyond Abuja, beyond Nigeria, so shine. So shine for his glory, for his majesty. Now listen please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see the word grace there? The next word we see there is love. The third word we see there is communion. They coexist. Grace, love, fellowship. That you access grace by contending for high level spiritual illumination backed up by a life of prayer if you have a problem of prayer in this church you are not genuinely connected I submit to you sincerely and truthfully because he says ye are all partakers of my grace there is an abundance of grace that can shake away prayer laxity if only you have the discernment to tap into it and fellowship with the spirit let me tell you this the secret of being visible is to be hidden you see when you can learn to hide in his presence it will compel the nations to look for you where did I find that scripture give us mark chapter 1 please from verse 35 let me show you the formula for visibility mark 1 35 we're reading to 37 the Bible says after Jesus finished all his crusades mighty works in righteousness the Bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before days that in your Bible he went out and departed into a noisy place into a market square a solitary place and there pray what was the result Simon and they that were with him followed him may this be your testimony verse 37 read with me and when they had found him they said unto him 
all men seek for thee all men seek for the one who is hiding to pray all men seek for the one who is hiding to study all men seek for the one who is hiding to rise in light all men seek for the one who is hiding to know they do not seek for the ignorant they do not seek for the proud they do not seek for the valueless you must contend for high level spiritual illumination listen many of us the end of this conference should be the start of your retreat you should go back and say lord we have to flog out this issue of destiny i am tired of an average life there is an abundance of grace that can rest upon me i'm tired of people suspecting me as though you did not call me hear me it is one thing to be called but Apostle Paul encourages us, he says, give diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop people from doubting the validity of your call. Jesus, a man approved by miracles, signs, wonders. Apostle God has called me into the financial realm. Congratulations. We will give you some time. And if we don't see a seed, we have a right to say, listen, faith is not foolishness. If it is not working, go and seek for true light. Are we together? Yes. You have tolerated ignorance in your life too much. You have gauged your success by poor and wrong parameters and you have accredited yourself where you should be challenging yourself to rise it is amazing that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father and he's still making intercession as though what he did were not finished that is the spirit of a champion having said it is finished Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry he said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Looking unto Jesus, he said, who is the author and the finisher of our faith? Who for the joy that was set before him, is that in your Bible? That he endured the cross and he despised the shame. I made up my mind that for as long as I am alive, nothing will hinder my pressing. I will learn I will grow, I will build, I will stretch, I will challenge myself. It was Bishop Abioye who said, how am I stretched? Stretching does not kill. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. You are a business owner here. Throw it. The time you use for jealousy and pitying yourself is the same energy you would need to invest yourself in superior knowledge. Knowledge is like a lift. It can lift you. In certain nations of the world, there are buildings that are up to 200 stories and in a matter of minutes, the lift is at such tremendous speed, sometimes you don't even know you are rising. You just know you started and it's gotten there. Your life may look like you, are, you don't even, you see the thing with mastery is sometimes it's so effortless, you are not even aware how fast you are going. Except that thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph from one level of results, one, one dimension of exploit to the other. Hallelujah. The key again, I repeat as we prepare to pray, high level spiritual illumination. Go and write the various aspects of your life where you have not seen the grace of God speaking. Be very sincere with yourself. I have seen that there is no favor in my life. It's, this is not negative confession. This is acknowledging what is there so you can deal with it. Two of you can be walking as friends. They will greet and bless one person and leave you. And the person who blessed him knows you more. It tells you that thing is not working. When, listen, when Samuel met with Saul, Saul told him by reason of what has come upon you, you will be returning back and you will see three men holding two loaf of bread. They will salute you and give to you. You think people just give? No. Thou anointest my head with oil. I see what is on my head by looking at my cup. If my cup is empty, don't blame the cup. 
the cup is a report card that there is nothing on your head. Hallelujah. If there are 10 people to be favored in this room, I will start praying for the remaining nine. Because one position has been occupied for sure. You see, let me tell you something about knowledge. Knowledge gives you stability. The Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Are we together now? It's time for us to settle down. Some of you need to go and get Reverend Sam's teaching and get all of the teachings you can find and settle down. And now begin to listen. Don't say I was there when he preached it. Is the result speaking. If the answer is no, go back again. Are we together? Oh, I read Papa Hagin's book. What was on him? Is it on you now? Read again. I prophesied as I was commanded. I saw some results. And he said, prophesy again. Again is a powerful word. It is the press for perfection. Again. I fasted, but I can fast again. I studied, but I can study again. I was serious with God and later became unserious. I can be serious again. For someone, this is your prophetic word tonight. Again. God is saying, go back again. Go back again. Go back again. Go back. The same way it was while you were with him on campus. I'm saying this prophetically. God is saying there was something you and me did while you were on campus. As soon as you came out, the vicissitudes of life have eroded your passion, eroded your prayer life, eroded your walk with God. Some of this before you started making money and that word again, like the hair of Samson, God is calling you. Void yourself of these distractions and return to the place where you can say again. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline